Rub up your engines! If a four-wheeled vehicle is called an automobile, and a two-wheeled vehicle is called a motorcycle, then what is the three-wheeled vehicle called? Well, I guess it depends who you are. The federal government calls it a three-wheeled motorcycle, but 44 of the 50 states in the United States call it an auto cycle, and you do not need a motorcycle license to drive it. So whatever you want to call it, it's actually a lot of fun, and today I'm going to go through this Polaris slingshot to show you what they have, what you get. You can see inside, it's got bucket seats, it's kind of dirty, I took it to the beach. It's got a regular car steering wheel, turn signals, and a horn. <laughs> Parking brake, it's not electric, it's a regular one, works quite well. Now this is a fancy Roush slingshot, their high-end version, and I like it because I got a five-speed manual transmission. It's a lot of fun to drive, but it's dependable because that's a five-speed ASIN standard transmission. Now, this transmission has been in a lot of vehicles over the ages. It's been proven to be very dependable. If you can't drive the stick, they have an automatic. Now, of course, it doesn't perform as well as this manual transmission does. Now, when it comes to the engine, the new one, 2023, it has the Polaris own built and designed engine. It's a two-liter four-cylinder engine, naturally aspirated, it's not turbocharged. The original ones had that Chevy Ecotec, which actually put out less horsepower than this. This is a high revving engine because those 202 horsepowers are measured at the crank. They're not measured at the drive wheel, they're measured at the crank. And it's at 8,250 RPM, which as you can see here, that's where it starts redlining. If you drive it like mad, you're going to get horrible gas mileage. Now, driving it normally, you can get 18 to 20 miles a gallon if you're just tootling along. But if you're really pushing it, it's going to get pretty low gas mileage. That's just how anything is if you're going to go to the high RPMs, right? Now, if I bought one myself, I would probably want to put a supercharger on it. But if you did that, it'd probably be a big problem. You can see it's got a belt drive. The drive is a fiberglass impregnated belt. Let's say you supercharged this thing, bumped it up to 300 something horsepower. I doubt if that belt could take it without snapping. I kind of doubt that. So, I mean, it's plenty fast enough the way it is. As the PR guys told me at Polaris, they said, this isn't a racing machine. This is a fun machine. And it is a lot of fun. It's got interesting suspension, but it doesn't lean or anything. The really fancy three-wheelers have suspension systems so that the body and the tires can lean just like a regular motorcycle you wouldn't want to try it with this machine they even warn you improper use can result in serious injury or death so even though it really looks like a racing machine it is not an actual racing machine for example the Campania t-rex used to have a bmw engine now it's got a kawasaki 1400cc engine it puts out about the same horsepower 203 but it only weighs 997 pounds this weighs a little over 1600 pounds and a lot more when i'm sitting at it so as you can see it's not a racing machine it's a fun machine now don't get me wrong this thing is quick this is the fastest one it goes zero to 60 in like 4.9 seconds but the t-rex does it in 3.9 seconds which is quite a bit faster i mean it says plenty of grints to it it just doesn't have all the formula one racing system that the Campania has the guy was a formula one engineer so you know he knows what he's doing with formula one and since if you bought the base model of the slingshot right and you bought the base model of the t-rex you could buy almost four of these for one of those so they're completely different machines they look the same right but in terms of what you use them for they're completely different got serious tires nice brembo brakes got a nice roll bar system man there's a little bit of comforts here one behind each seat you can hold the rear them out we're taking it to the grocery store later when the fog breaks up now it doesn't have an obd plug to plug a scanner in these use a marine protocol by law they're allowed to sell a marine type of analytics but you can't just plug in a regular obd scanner now as you can see when we started it up it has an alarm system but no doors it's not outrageously loud but it does make noise because the exhaust comes out right under the passenger the exhaust is right here it comes out right down there that's the open cockpit design you don't want the exhaust getting into your compartment. You wouldn't want to seal it up and get carbon monoxide in there. Most vehicles by law have to exit their exhaust behind the car. This is right in the front. So you want an open design 
And truthfully, if you were sitting idling for any length of time, I'd advise shutting the motor off, because otherwise the fumes are coming on. Now my wife didn't like the noise right here, but she's always complaining to me about noise anyway. I'm too loud, this is too loud, right? I mean in Tennessee she's driving around in a real quiet Lexus, so she didn't like the sound. I like the sound, it's not outrageous. That's the one thing I've got against a lot of modern motorcycles is they're too quiet. Nobody can hear you. Now this is bigger than a motorcycle, right? So it's easier to see, especially with bright colors, but you want people to hear you a little. You don't want a totally quiet, like you would never want one of these things as an electric vehicle. If it didn't make any noise, people don't hear you, don't see you, they're going to squash you, right? Same thing with electric motorcycles. I would never buy an electric motorcycle because they don't make any noise and people have enough problem hearing and seeing you on a big motorcycle. You're not making any noise, you're going to be squashed like a bug. Now I do have to say, if you ever did have to work on it, it's like an old Triumph Spitfire. You just pop it up and all kinds of working room, but like I say, that is an ASIN 5 speed transmission. They're pretty reliable. I haven't seen any problems yet with this Polaris engine. I think it was a good thing. They switched away from the GM four cylinder Ecotec. That's not the greatest engine in the world. GM quality is kind of, I've been driving around, it performs great. The only downside is the horsepower comes at very high RPMs. You got to rev it up high, which wears the engine out faster, and of course eats up a lot more gasoline. Bad enough just cruising around with a small thing like this that you might get. 20 miles a gallon or something, but hey, you're pushing it. I pushed this thing, man, I got like three miles a gallon. I realize if you're going to really push it, you're going to go through a lot of gasoline. You're going to be revving at the high RPMs all the time. As the bell tolls, I got to say, it's a pretty sharp looking vehicle. Here's a nice space age look. Nobody's going to miss these brake lights, nice and bright, and then a string of them going up. Nice bright turn signals. It does have traction control that you can turn off for a short period of time. It's not a permanent shut off. Now this is the racing version, so it's got a basic radio in it, a couple of speakers, but you can get real fancy stereos if you want. Let's face the facts. Most of the guys driving these with manual transmissions, zoom around, listening to the engine noise, having fun. And as like I said, zero to 60 and 4.9 seconds is quick. It's not supercar quick, you know, I mean a Tesla does it in two something seconds. So, I mean, it is fast. It'll keep up with a lot of vehicles on the road that have big engines in them. Up to a point because it's speed limited to like 125 miles an hour. The computer won't let it go any faster. Which is probably a good idea because it's an open cockpit. You know, there's seat belts and everything in it, right? But you're still supposed to wear helmets when you're driving it around. Warning, this is a motorcycle. I always wear a DOT certified full face helmet. So you're supposed to wear a full face helmet the whole time. I mean, hey, if you buy one, you don't need helmets in your state. Do whatever you want. It's your car. You know, you buy something, you want to do something. They're just putting on there to limit their liability. So they warned you to wear a helmet. And if you didn't, well, and if you drove like a maniac, they warned you on the pillar too. It says if you tried this crazy, it might result in injury or even death. Now I've been driving motorcycles since I was a teenager. And I'll tell you one thing. Riding on this thing is at least 10 times more dangerous than riding on this thing. It's only got three wheels, but look at the back wheel. It's really wide, so it's stable. The front tires are also wide, not quite as wide, but it's a very stable platform. This is a fancy one with added on top, right? But I gotta say, I like the top because I'm getting old and my top is going back, right? I want to burn my head with sunburn. So keeping the sun off my head, not a bad idea. Plus my wife rides with this and she likes it. She doesn't like motorcycles that much anymore. She says there's too much wind buffeting. You'd be surprised what this tiny windscreen this top can do. There is not that bad of a breeze inside the vehicle. And being designed so that it doesn't lean, that stability makes it a very easy vehicle to drive. Anybody who drives a car can drive one of these things. So you might think, why not build them with four wheels? Well, if you build something like this with four wheels, it's got to conform to all of the safety, of the NHTSA safety regulations. With three wheels, it is technically federally, like I said, the feds see them as three-wheeled motorcycles. As such, they don't have to go through crash testing. They're completely different than if they had four wheels and were a car. That's why people are building these three wheels to bypass laws that would cost them a fortune to get these things to meet NHTSA crash regulations. Matter of fact, they may not ever be able to reach those crash specifications. They don't have body panels, they don't even have doors. So how are they gonna meet side crash requirements, right? So that's the reason I build them with three wheels instead of four. And really that's what Polaris does, you know? Snowmobiles, personal watercraft, stuff like that. They're not something that you buy for regular transportation. You buy it 
for fun. And here we go. We're not gonna go fast to the subdivision, everyone will get mad. But where do we get on the highway? Doesn't go over bumps all that well. It's only got three wheels now. All right, here we go. It is fun, but like I say, it doesn't lean, but it handles good enough. Here we go. You notice it does on the leaner tip, it's fine. So there you have it, a Polaris slingshot. Now you know just about everything you possibly need to know about them, so you can make a wise decision. Do you want to get a nice little toy? You know? Maybe you want to try and win out. You can rent them in many places, try them out, see if you like them. They are a fun toy. They're not a racing machine. They're not meant as a racing machine. They're not light, super lightweight like a Campania is. But then again, they don't start at $80,000 either. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell!